Hey guys, this is Mike. Okay, first things first, um, this is a follow-up to a previous review of mine regarding the Bose QC30 headset. So if you haven't seen that, you may want to start there. The link in the description below, annotation here or here, wherever you see the annotation. So I started marching down and responding to a few of the initial comments that rolled in, but as more and more came about, you guys were mentioning stuff that everyone kind of needed to hear <laughs> and things that I totally should have included in my initial review. That's impressive. Good job, everybody. And here I was thinking I did a pretty thorough review. But yeah, kudos. I overlooked some pretty key stuff. So I know going through every single comment isn't exactly sustainable in the long run, but I basically wasn't sure how many of you actually read comments. So I figured I'd walk through a few and fill in my own gaps from the previous video. So let's do this. Oh, man. Okay, you can do this. <laughs> So in no particular order, Tilla, Ilarla, Lairla, Il, oh no, damn. So I'm just going to refer to people by initials or some random nickname, Till All Are One. Ha, huh, nice. Love it. Anyways, but trying to guess how I would pronounce people's name just never works out for me. Hell, I got a 50-50 shot of putting my shirt on the right way each morning, but I'm still batting like 20% there. 80% of the time without fail. That shit's going to end up backwards. <laughs> Man, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in regards to your names, instead of just guessing, I'm going to ballpark it. Absolutely no offense intended, the problems on this end. I guess it just helps me feel more in control if I'm intentionally wrong. So nicknames it is. <laughs> T1 Love, they've had the QC30s and recognized the step down from the QC35s in regards to noise cancellation. That said, these are best overall. Completely agree. It's a slight step down, not to level I think what most would notice, especially those who are kind of new to the active canceling world, but they definitely do their job. An awesome job catching that. For the rest of you, here's a trick. So I fully realize this makes you look like you completely lost it to anyone watching, but it's sort of like seeing somebody walk into a spider web or being chased by a small bee from a distance, casual one minute and totally spazzing out for the, no reason the next. But it is quite effective in regards to noise cancellation and testing that noise cancellation. To break this down real quick, what you're listening for is the pop as your highs, the hiss, and the slide off of your thumb, like the cymbal, strum on a guitar or a snare, so your mids basically, and the thud. As it hits right here for your lows. It's just something I use to gauge which parts of that snap that I do here through a cancellation device. And that's both with a song playing and without a song playing. T1 also commented that they missed a 20-hour battery life on the Q35s. And yeah, kind of a sad trade-off, have to admit. I have found, however, that if you go into the Bose app and set in the auto-off time, it helped me tremendously. So I help you guys as well. K Will is on her second set of QC30s, had problems with it connecting and disconnecting while outside. She actually went as far as to call Bose and they had her exchange it. Oh man, I said her. That's another 50-50. If I'm wrong, super sorry. Okay, so here's a few notes here. Even though I personally haven't had this problem with this particular headset, I've definitely had my fair share with others. It's not just Bose. Across the board, I've had different products cut in and out on me. <laughs> Even with the phone or Mac sitting right in front of me, no more than two feet away. Then you take the same device, put it in your pocket, walk outside, and things become completely useless. Awesome job calling Bose. I've done this myself quite a few times simply because they do seem genuinely eager to help you. That being said though, most of the time, they're just gonna walk you through the same steps you'll find in the troubleshooting section of the manual. So for anyone else who's encountered this, at this point, I've just realized, check the manual. If there's still an issue, return the product. You'll definitely find some lemons out there. Okay, well, really hope that second shot works for you. And if not, seriously, return them and purchase them from a different vendor. One last thing to point out here, if you are going through the exchange process and it doesn't seem to be helping at all, try a different reseller. So if you're going to a local store, give Amazon a shot because sometimes these lemons do come in batches. This one in particular, I'd probably give a third and fourth shot at just to be safe. They seriously do work awesome. All right, John Fang. That's pretty straightforward. Found one connecting to a Mac. Sometimes Bluetooth is not stable and the sound cuts out intermediately. Do you have the same problem? And it's kind of along the lines of what's above, but again, check the user manual, especially in your situation. You'll find on page uh, 24, I think it is, when having multiple devices connected, you'll not only lose some audio and noise cancellation qualities, but all kinds of things can be affected. And this very well may be one of them. So if you have it connected to your phone, and to your Mac. More specifically in the manual, you'll see that there's not only an option to connect two devices simultaneously, but you can actually cycle through them individually as well. So simultaneously connected, device one, device two. Uh, I would definitely recommend you go through this process just to isolate things. So if it were me, I'd test this if nothing else, just to rule things out. I would also test on different machines. The Bluetooth antenna on PCs especially typically isn't anywhere close to the strength of that on a phone. Taking this a step further for phone users, experiment with your case on and off. By the way, don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying that if you test on another machine or with or without your phone case on that this device just isn't for you if you're not willing to buy a new computer or a new phone. You just want to find out if this is something unique to your environment or 
or whether you just have a dud on your hands and need to exchange it. Okay, Lynn says that their QC30s are on the way and they just really want to make sure it wasn't going to disappoint. I've seen a lot of reviews stating that the microphone sucks and the noise quality is quite poor compared to the QC20s or the QC35s. In response to that, I'd say I've seen this stated a lot too and I don't get it. Without question, say the noise cancellation is way better than what you're going to find on the QC20s and I mean at least, at least 50% better. Again, not on the QC35s like I mentioned in a previous video. I do think those edge out the QC30s slightly, but no, without question, the QC20s, the QC20i is not even close from a noise cancellation perspective. And as for the mic, I actually had another comment on the same thing. Uh, Eric W brought this up as well. So yeah, thanks Eric and Lynn for mentioning this. I looked at it and you're right. A lot of people have said the same thing. So personally, I find the mic to be incredible, even better than speaking directly into my phone to the point where callers assume I've upgraded my 6S Plus to a 7. And thanks to the great friends I have, poking fun at me for making that decision. Oh man iPhone 7. What a sad day for innovation. <laughs> Anyhow, as I'm sure most of you have noticed, this is coming from a low talker and a mumbler. But as far as Eric and Lynn are concerned, hopefully you've gotten yours by now, so yeah, keep me posted. Joseph A. Literally love you. Love this review. Love you too, eh? Thanks. R. Dylan, sorry in advance, but I have to share your Facebook message. Uh, I know this has nothing to do with a comment that's showing on the screen right now, but R. D. found my review via Facebook and reached out to me to share a negative he found while using the QC30s. <laughs> oh man, how do I put this without disgusting myself? Um, apparently, you don't want to pass gas, flatulate, and there's some words I just do not like, and fart is one of those words. But yeah, anyways, apparently you don't want to fart when you have these things on, no matter how small of one it may seem to be. So yeah, in his case, apparently he was just kind of crop dusting through his living room with the QC30s on and didn't realize exactly how loud it was until the expressions on his family's face kind of told the story. <laughs> Oh man, that's so wrong. So thanks for the tip, man. As for the rest of you, if by some odd chance this story helps you hold a few in, then awesome. I'm all for it. Personally, I'd prefer everybody to kind of save that for the restroom. Ugh, it's like nasal rape, forcing that smell into my body without permission. It's not cool. Damn it. But yeah, thanks again, RD. Okay, Adrian Z, thanks, but still like the feeling of headphones around my ears. Plus the QC35s come with a cable just in case the battery dies. I, I have no argument here. I kind of agree. I grew up with that. In fact, I've kept the Sennheiser Momentum 2s for this very reason. There's just a nostalgia there. Well, not really a nostalgia. An intangible there. I haven't grown up with this style well over half my life. And yeah, going from over the year to end is kind of like switching from boxers to briefs. It's a bit invasive. I can say, though, that over the course of researching all this the past few years, I have kind of, I don't know, expanded my horizons a bit. In short, if I had to recommend one, the QC30s over the QC35s to anyone, I am all in on the QC30s as your primary device. But I do know what you mean, and you're right, it's a feeling, and again, one that I can't argue. And by the way, the lack of cable he mentioned is an excellent point. This is one of those things I definitely should have mentioned in my review. So everyone, uh, there is no cable. I mean, the only cable you're going to get in the box is for USB charging. So when that battery dies, you're out of luck. Another reason I kept momentum too. So this is also very important for anyone who flies free. The QC35s not only come with a cable, but an airplane adapter. For those, please turn off any yada 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 moments during a flight. The QC30s absolutely don't. Okay, as Trent says, generally likes them, but has one massive caveat. Apparently he's noticed when he's sitting still, everything's fine, but when he gets mobile, walking around the city of London, the Bluetooth connectivity is absolutely terrible. It's going in and out on him once a minute. He goes on to say he's using the iPhone 5, latest iOS update, that even when he places it in his suit breast pocket, so it's only like a couple feet away from the QC30s, he still has this issue, so it's basically unusable, and for the money, unacceptable. So first of all, <laughs> I know better than to get into an argument with a Brit, so I'm not falling into that black hole. Again, is that race? Is that racist? Are foot and feet even in a measure in the imperial system? I should know this. But anyways, yeah, man, hopefully some of the previous responses helped you with this one. Again, just check the manual for troubleshooting tips, call bows, grab a placement. But I may actually be across the pond in a few months. So if I do make the trip and I notice this issue, I'll definitely reach back out to you. Okay, Ted B. They basically got theirs yesterday. The only thing they would add is that they wish the bows had included some way to equalize the sound from within their app. In addition, there was apparently one song that when the heavy bass kicked in, when at max volume, the overall sound became kind of muddled. First, yeah, I completely agree as far as the app's concerned. I wish they would take that leaps and bounds further. I'm not sure why nobody's done this, especially if it could be done on like a song-by-song -song basis. That would just be amazing. So if something just didn't sound right to you, you could dial in the setting you want, save that equalization setting with the song so the next time it queued up, man, that would be sweet. As for the bass overload experience, there are quite a few factors to be at play here. As I kind of mentioned in the written comment, uh, the absolute first thing I'd recommend trying is to try another source. So if you're listening to it through Spotify or Apple Music, maybe go try to find an HQ YouTube version. I mean, for me, they're definitely 
certain artists that I manually track down the highest quality MP3 or flight file source for just to ensure that I get the absolute most out of it. So bands like Tool and Pink Floyd and Zeppelin and instrumentals, classical music, or even choirs, anything that has multiple complex components at play in the background, I recommend everybody, whether you're having bass problems or not, seek down these high quality versions of these albums because you can listen to a single song for a solid day and find new stuff each time around. It's pretty incredible. But anyways, yeah, there's going to be a lot of things that are causing the muffling that I'd probably recommend ruling out before diving deeper on, into the headset. If I had to guess, most likely this is falling into the audio source itself. Branded, how is the battery life? This is something I definitely should have mentioned previously. <laughs> the battery life is great, but as I stated earlier, the QC35s do seem to last quite a bit longer. Officially, Bose lists the QC30s for about 10 hours of consistent use, but on average, uh, I seem to be hitting around 16. As stated in my written comment, this is very much a guesstimation. I haven't truly sat down with a timer set at max volume, press the play button and just let it run. So it is just a generalization. I guess while I'm in the midst of verbalizing my written comments, I should go ahead and point out my notes again on this front as well. First of all, both sets that I got were charged about 70% right out of the box. But you definitely want to give these things a full charge before you expect too much out of the battery. Uh, it seems to dissipate pretty quickly. And it actually had me kind of concerned at first too. So yeah, don't fret it if the first time you use it, it dies on you in a few hours. Just give that guy a full charge and, and you should be in good shape from then on. Oh, <laughs> when the audible alert comes on, it interrupts your music saying that it's time to recharge. This isn't like a car's gas tank where you have a good 10 extra miles before you need to worry about finding a gas station. These mean business. Once this alert hits, you have like a minute before they shut down on you. So be prepared for that. <laughs> Attila V uh, actually mentioned something pretty interesting here. This is something I hadn't considered before. So even though this wasn't a question, what V pointed out here was actually super interesting. I've definitely noticed a wide range of inconsistencies when, when it comes to various brands and the battery life they have listed on the box versus what I actually end up experiencing. Bose in particular always seem to underrate their batteries, meaning I always seem to get consistently more like battery life out of the product than what was actually listed. In, in the past, I just saw this as, I don't know, some sort of way for Bose to slip a hidden bonus in there for me. Putting lower battery life on the box so I'd be pleasantly surprised when I got way more out of it. But seriously, never considered what V pointed out here. It makes perfect sense that Bose is accurate when it comes to battery life, that they measure their volume at 100%, whereas other companies will do their testing at like 50 or 70% so they can claim a better battery life. And that most of their headphones with the capabilities of the QC30s or QC35s would definitely find their boxes still sitting on the shelf. They marketed a three hour battery. <laughs> so V, deeply appreciate the insight, man, and, and absolutely love the profile pic. Made me smile. Lewis Taylor. <laughs> I love this one. Are these headphones very loud or not? Now, that's not one of my paraphrases. That's literally exactly what the comment said. So first of all, love the directness of the question. Much appreciated, LT. Very loud? Um, okay, both of these words are super subjective, but I'm going to do the best I can for you. As far as pure loudness, as in, if I blasted my 7.1 surround sound home theater to max volume, obviously this thing is going to be nowhere near that level, but it could drown it out. So to make this quick, the headphone market is just regulated pretty heavily to avoid lawsuits. So the maximum volume levels are tested, scrutinized to whatever the FCC deems appropriate at the time to kind of govern, okay, you have to operate within this threshold. And it's just kind of that way across the board. From time to time, the government just steps in and tells different industries what they have to adhere to. So I guess my final verdict here is no, these headsets are not just straight up loud. In the truest sense of the word, the loudest, I guess, would have to be the beats. And I don't really say this as a positive, <laughs> definitely not as a recommendation. I think the only reason they've got away with it is because their target audience probably already has some level of ear damage at play here that they can blame on other things if they ever ended up in court. <laughs> can say though that the noise cancellation aspect of this, that's why I harped on it so much in the first video, combined with the right fit, I'm only using mine at about 80% max volume. Unless maybe I'm trying to learn a song, like on the guitar, piano, whatever. <clears throat> that's about the only time I have caught myself cranking it up to 100%. But even then, that's mainly because I've only got one earbud in and I'm half listening as deep into the background of the song as I can and the other half is towards what I'm playing. I guess the best way to sum this up is I have never clicked the volume up button and it stopped me before I reached a level I was satisfied with. Hope that answers your question and makes sense. Okay, Lynn's back with another comment. She says she's subscribed. She hopes I update the channel frequently. These books, tech products, or even this unprecedented election. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I guess, first of all, thanks a ton for the recommendations, Lynn. Yeah, we'll see. As for the election, I really don't know what to say other than please go vote. Everyone, please vote. <laughs> I never truly understood the depths of the terms undecided voter until this one. I don't even think I'll know who I'm voting for until I'm looking at the names in front of me in the booth. Huh. What this whole thing reminds me of, it reminds me of watching a movie with my wife. She knows everything about every actor and actress out there. Their life story, how many kids they have, who they're married to, who they're divorced from. Everything. It's ridiculous. And she feels like I want to know this information. And a lot of times it just can ruin the movie for me. I mean, hell, I'm just sitting down to watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I really didn't need to know that this was the movie that destroyed a relationship. And how many kids were adopted because of it. I'm not saying that stuff's bad. It's just not why I sat down to watch the movie. It's definitely interesting, though. I mean, this is the first election in my lifetime where I knew 
way more than I cared to about the candidates before they were even candidates. I mean, I had no clue who Kerry was, McCain was. I didn't even know W existed before he ran for office, much less Jeb. It's very different this time around, that's for sure. On one hand, you have a guy who I believe truly believes in what he's saying and will do the things that he's saying he's going to do. The problem being that some of those things he says just scares the absolute shit out of me. And then on the other side, I don't even think she believes half the shit that's coming out of her mouth, so it's hard for me to take that seriously. It should be interesting. Feels like a social media versus mainstream media election. Super curious to see how it turns out. But yeah, vote. Please, for your own sake, go vote. That way that even in worst case scenario, things go horribly wrong, you can at least look back and have a personal sense of, I tried. At some base level, you wait it all out, you gave it your all, and you did your part. And at the same time, please don't buy into all the doom and gloom stuff. I'd like to think that no matter who's elected, four years isn't going to take down a country like this. I mean, I guess it could, but hell. Just cast your vote and start learning to love the person next to you a little bit more, no matter what their viewpoint is. Because we're going to have some major healing to do either way. And that needs to start sooner rather than later. It's really weird that agree to disagree is such a lost concept. It just seems like if someone doesn't agree with you these days, you're instantly labeled put into a bucket, a racist, a sexist, a bigot, flat out idiot. But I do love that this generation publicizes its opinions so much because inevitably at some point they're going to look back at all the people they shunned over the years for something as simple as how much they loved Spongebob and somebody else didn't and realize, man, that really wasn't a reason to ruin a friendship. Maybe I'm the idiot. Go vote! Okay, Lynn again. By the way, if you can increase the volume a little bit, have your mic closer to you, it might be easier to hear you clearly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. This was actually echoed by Complicated J as well. Can you speak clear, trying to pay attention, but your voice is so soft and sleepy? Soft and sleepy. Dang it, that would have been a great channel name. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. Sorry, y'all. I'm just recording this and editing these videos on the fly with my little MacBook Air. Hopefully, I've got the volume levels adjusted a little bit better this time around. Appreciate the heads up, both of you. So, in closing to all of you, Jay Perez and Robert R., and everyone else who mixed in various compliments throughout their comments, deeply, deeply appreciate it. I can honestly say all your comments, critiques, criticisms, everything was just spot on. You guys impressed me. It was great feedback. If by chance I missed or omitted anybody, I'd be apologize. And yeah, once again, I hope this helps. As always, don't know you, but I love you. Catch you again soon. And go vote. Damn it. For the love of God. Go.